Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to Edwards Motorhomes. Now today we're going to do a handover video for you on the Roller Team Autoroller 746. Okay, so we're going to work from the outside in. But the one thing I do want to show you first of all is your bonnet release catch. If you do need to get underneath your bonnet, you just pull that catch there to release. Next, we have your fuel filler and we have your add blue. Very important when it comes to your fuel filler, it does work off your ignition key, same as your driver's door. Everything else will work off your habitation key. Then we have your gas locker, just here. Fridge vents. And your electric hookup point. Now, with your electric hookup point, you'll notice this catch. When you're plugged in to release, you do need to drop that down or you won't be able to take the cable off. Then we come to your storage area. Now, this runs underneath the bench seat and goes the full width of the motor. And you will see there's a door at the other side, so you can get in from both sides. When we come around to the back of the vehicle, at the top there, we have your reversing camera, we have your bike rack, and underneath the van, we do have your spare wheel. Again, we have the access there to your storage area, and your cassette toilet. Now, the cassette toilet isn't the dirty, horrible job that people expect it's going to be. It's actually quite simple. Now, when we go into the van, I'll show you, but on the bowl itself, you have a handle which will open and close the blade on top of the toilet. For obvious reasons, the blade must be closed for you to be able to remove the cassette. So, when it comes to removing the cassette, there's a blue catch just here. So, you lift that and then you pull it out. Now, on every campsite, they'll have a place called an Alston point, and that's where you have to dispose of your waste. So, you unclip the handle. You roll that to the Alston point. When you get there, clip that back in. You unscrew the top. Now, when you're pouring away into the Alston point, just remember to press this blue button on the back. What that will do is let air flow, so it doesn't glug all over the place. It'll be a nice, smooth release. Once you've finished, flush through with the hose, flush away again, add your new blue chemical, put that back in. Cassette goes back in. Job done. Here we have the filler for your fresh water. That is just pop a hose in and fill up the fresh water tank. Underneath here, just there, that is the release for your wastewater tank. Again, all you need to do is pull that and that will then release your wastewater. Only other thing really to show you on here is first of all, we have this extra storage just here. Now this is great for things like your toilet chemicals or your leveling chocks, any of your dirty bits and pieces really. And then of course we have the flue for your heating. Now something that is very important with the flue for the heating is you'll notice on this window just here, you have a sensor. If this window is open, it will not allow you to use your heating because for obvious reasons, gas is going back up into the van. So when your heating's on, make sure this window is closed. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work from the front of the vehicle and work our way back. So when we're looking at the front, first thing is obviously we've got your two electric windows just here and your electric mirrors. Over here, of course, we have your Bluetooth and we have your wash wipes, indicators and headlights, cruise control, stereo controls. Something very important with your stereo is this switch just here. So if you want your stereo to be working, when you're obviously not driving, you flick that switch on. Most important though, when you are parked up and you're out the van, make sure it's on zero. Otherwise, it'll keep your stereo running and it will drain your batteries down. So before we get to your media center, we have your pop-up tablet or phone holder. So all you have to do, pop that, pop your phone or tablet in just there. You can then pop it into either your USB or your 12 volt to charge it, and then you can Bluetooth it through your media center. When it comes to your media center, you have your home button just there. So again, you can select your navigation, your FM tuner, your DAB, your camera, 
brightness of the panel or your easy connect. Flick across, you've got your USBs, your Bluetooths and your settings. Again, you can flick on there for camera or on there for nav as well if you wanted to. And like I say, if you hit that switch, it will kill the power. Over on this side, we have your passenger airbag. And in here, we have your USB point for your media center. But also this is a cool box. So if you have your cab air conditioning on, keep that lovely and cool. So again, if you've got a bar of chocolate or a bottle of water, pop it in there with the aircon on, nice and cool for you. Here, of course, we have your heating controls, your traction plus, your hill descent, your hazard warning lights, lock or unlock your doors. And of course, just there, that one is for your heated mirrors. When it comes to the locking and the unlocking the doors, it will lock and unlock your driving your passenger seat, passenger doors rather. It won't do the habitation door. So there we have your dashboard. Next thing we come to is your seats. Now you'll see you got these two handles and that's because both these are swivel seats. So if we do this with the passenger seat, put your hand on there and push round. You have the catch at the front to slide the seat backwards and forwards. When you've spin round, you'll notice on the side of the seat you have these two catches. That one is to adjust the front of the seat, that one is to adjust the back. So, if we go on there, that will slide that back up or down. That one will do the same for the back. Once you've got your weight on there, it will move up and down. Wheel just there for your backrest, and of course you do have your wheels on your arms as well. So again, you can get those into the ideal position. Only other things really to show you in the cab are your cab blinds. Now, with the windscreen ones, you have these pinch points just here and here. Pull them across and lock into place. Now, something that is very important with these, pop an elastic band or something just round there. I have known people who put it all together like that. They've got a shower or they've got up in the morning wandering around and the whole thing goes... You really don't want that to happen, so put an elastic band or something around there. Next thing is, again, when you're moving off, make sure you clip that in properly. You don't want to be turning left and that flying across in front of your face. Same on the opposite side. Now, when it comes to the side windows, again, you pinch and you slide out. Now, try and keep this front piece as straight as possible and it will just lock in. When you bring it back, again, get to that point keep it straight, tuck in at the bottom, and it clips into place. These blinds aren't really something you want children to be dealing with. They're very good, they're very easy to use, but they are quite thin and they're easily damageable. So next we have your over cab bed. Now there's obviously a ladder to get up and down to this, but what I really want to show you is when you pull it down, that's great for two things. Now obviously you've got a lot of storage up there and you've got the double bed. But when you've got it pushed up as well, it saves you from banging your head when you're going in and out of your cab area. Now also underneath here you have netting. Now that will lock up into place so it stops anybody from rolling out of the bed when they're in there. It is a great sized proper double bed. It'll take two good sized adults up there. Okay, so now we're going to do your dinette. Now we're going to kill three birds in one stone with this one. So we're going to go through your bed makeup. We're also going to show you your fresh water tank and we're going to show you your boiler as well. Now you'll notice I've already removed the cushions. Just make life a little bit easier. So with the table, it just locks onto the wall. So when you lift it and raise, it will come off. Now with the table leg, you'll see just here you have a catch. Press that, lock it down. That now becomes the base of your bed. So you'll see we've got the lower bar on the wall. So all you do is now attach the clips to the lower bar and lock down. So now we have the base of your bed. But before we go any further on the bed, the next thing we're going to do is going to be your boiler and your fresh water tank. When we look underneath here, you see you've got your boiler. Now the thing I really want to show you is this blue switch over here. Now you can't really see, but on the other side there is a little blue button that pops out just in there. Now it means if the button's out that the boiler is open. So to close the boiler, you turn the tap and you'll press the little button in. That now means your boiler's sealed. So when you fill it with water, you put your water pump on, the water's gonna go directly through your boiler. If that locks over, it means the boiler's open. If you put your water pump on, the water's gonna go directly into the boiler and fall straight out all over the floor. Now this has got the auto switch. So if your van gets down to around about two degrees, it will automatically dump 
any water that's in your boiler. So the next one we're going to come to is your fresh water tank. So underneath here, you take the red top off and you'll notice there are two grommets in there. The higher one is your travel drain. If you raise that one and take it out, it will drain your tank down to you have around about 20 litres of water left in there. If you pull the lower one, it will completely drain down your fresh water tank, which is really what you need to be doing when you're draining down for the winter months. So next we come back to your bed. So when we're doing the bed, in your storage area, either side, you'll notice one of these small type tables. Now you'll see you push and lock either side. And then these become the extra parts on your bed just here. So you just literally lock that in like so. Again, there are one of these on each side. So there we have the base of the bed. Then we have these extra cushions. So with the extra cushions, this one here just pushes in there. Then we have two that are the same size. So again, when you fold out, one goes in there. next one there then you have these two extra pieces now you'll notice there's a bit of a lip and the idea with the lip is because this is slightly higher it just sits down there like so exactly the same on that one now when you look down the side of the bed you'll notice there's a gap just there the reason for that is you have got a USB and a 230 volt plug socket so again you don't want to be covering those up so there we have your bed your water tank in your boiler. So opposite the dinette we have this large chest of drawers just here. Now when we open the bottom one you will see you've got your trip switches and your fuses just in there. Other two are drawers and if you decide to have a television in your front dinette that would fit in just into there. But it does give you good work surface as well as in the kitchen because when we come to your kitchen First thing, we have this extender just here. So again, it'll give you more work surface space. Next, we have your three gas hobs and your sink. Then we have your three-way fridge freezer. Now how the three-way fridge freezer will work, that button there will turn it on. Now at the moment, we're plugged into the mains, so that's absolutely fine. If we weren't plugged into the mains, what we would now get is that flashing telling us we had a fault code. Because obviously if there's no power coming in, you can't run it on that. That one there is for gas. So again, that will only work if your gas is turned on. That one there is the one that confuses most people. Battery. Because you would assume that battery means leisure battery. It doesn't. It means vehicle battery. So the engine must be running whilst that one's on. And of course that one there will just then give you your temperatures. Two finger holes there. We'll open up your fridge. Next, we have your gas oven, and underneath, again, we have your trip switches, and we have your gas isolator switches. So here we have your 12 volt control panel. That button there turns on the power. Then, of course, we have all these different icons. Now, the top one there is for your water pump. If you press that, that will pop your water pump on. So again, you'll need that if you're flushing any water through, for your taps, for your shower, for your toilet, for the flush, anything like that. That one there is for awning light. That one there is for your lights. Now you'll notice at the moment that that is flashing. That's basically telling us that we have no water in the fresh water tank. Come back to that one in a second. This one here, like I say, is for your lights. Any lights that you've left on, because they have their own individual switches, as soon as you press that, they will come on automatically. That one will give you your interior temperature. It is warm in here at the moment. Then you have two options. You have S1 just here, that's your fresh water tank. 
Now at the moment, as you can see, it's showing zero, but that will go 33, 66, 99%. Press it again and it will give you R1, that is your wastewater tank, and that will do the same. 33, 66, 99%. Next one we have your power and your leisure battery, and your vehicle battery. Over here, this is the thermostat for your heating, which we'll come on to in a moment. The other thing to show you when we come to power is just up in this cupboard here. This is where we have your solar controller. Not an awful lot for you to do, but realistically, if the lights are working, it tells you that the solar panel is working. Okay, so first of all, here we have your wardrobe, which if I open it up, you can see you have your Trumarine net box there, which is all to do with your heating, so you can set it when you're on the go. And of course you have your standalone table. In the drawer down here, we have your cutlery tray just there, and extra storage just in here. Okay, so in the rear lounge, first of all, we have obviously your light switches and we have your TV prep just here then that brings me on to your heating system so at the moment you can see it's off to turn it on keep your finger pressed on there press it again and now we'll come up with your icons at the top of the screen so you have temperature water heat source those are your three main ones to start off with but we don't want to start off with number three We're, sorry with number one we want to start off with number three which is your heat source so we press on there we go to the start you have gas only then you have mix one which is gas and one electric element Mix two, which is gas and two electric elements, or purely electric with one electric element, or with two electric elements. So for now, we'll go to one electric element as we're plugged into the mains, because obviously your gas will only work if you've got your gas on, your electric will only work if you're plugged into the mains. So once we've set the source, we now need to go to the heat. So you press on the first icon, and you can take that up to anywhere up to 30 degrees. Now, if we pop that on 22, you just press the button there and it'll be a lot cooler than it is in here now. And then that will set your temperature to, third, sorry, to 22 degrees. Next one is your water. Now, obviously with your heating, you can run that without any water being in your system. But when it comes to your water, you must have water in if you're trying to heat the system. So again, press on, you have a choice of eco, which is 40 degrees, hot, which is 60, or boost, which will prioritize your hot water over everything else. Then we have your vents, so you press on here, you have a choice of off or vent. When you click on vent, that'll take you up to number 10, and that is literally how much air you are pushing through your vents throughout the van. Then we come down to your timer. So again, if you like to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, you can set your temperature to come on at 6 in the morning, so it's lovely and warm when you get up. Then we have your clock. So again, just by adjusting there, and then press the button and then it'll give you your time. Now the next one is your settings. Before I go on to there, you will notice you've got a little plug socket there. That's just telling us that we are plugged into the mains at the moment. So when we look at settings, the first option is to offset your screen. Next one is the temperature, so you can change from degrees to Fahrenheit. The brightness of your panel, 12 or 24 hour clock. Language, so if you're finding this all a little bit too easy and you wanna do it in French, Italian or German, by all means, carry on back to 12 or 24 hour clock. Then we have index. Now with index, if you have a fault come up, a warning triangle come up on your main screen and it will list the fault codes in your index. So you can go back, you can check with Truma and see exactly what's going on with your system. If you do wait too long, it will go back to the main screen. And after index, we have reset for the system. If you have a glitch that you can't take out. Now, if we go back to the main screen, as I was saying, you'll have a warning triangle come up there if you do something wrong. It, a lot of the time, it'll be the fact that you've put it onto electric, but you haven't plugged it into the mains, or you've put it on for gas and you haven't turned your gas on. Sometimes you will be in a position where if that comes up, it will take around about 15 minutes before you can reset the system. And there's your heating. Okay, so now we have your bathroom. Now you'll notice in the shower, you have this duckboard. You do need to remove that if you're going to use the shower because these screens then come round you. Next, of course, is this is where your shower fits. And it actually comes out from your sink. So you just pour that out, lock it onto there. And again, you use your tap then just to control your heat and obviously your flow. When we come down to the toilet, the first thing is that the bowl is completely adjustable. So you can get into the most comfortable position. Now, when I open it up, you'll notice that the blade is shut. 
Now, when we were talking about the cassette toilet when we were outside, as I was saying, that must be closed unless you are using the toilet. Now, underneath here, you've got this grey handle that will open or close your blade. Now, like I say, unless you are using the toilet, always make sure that's closed. There you have the flush for your toilet. Again, your water pump must be on for using the flush because the flush will come directly from your fresh water tank. Now, just down the back of here, you'll see that there is a green light. Now, that is telling you that the cassette is empty. If that goes red, your cassette is full. We also have more storage just up here. So the rear lounge also becomes your main bedroom. It does give you a very large bed, but you also have storage under both bunks here and here. Now, depending on how tall you are, if you take those back pieces off, you can use these as two singles, but most people will use it as the transverse double. And to do that, this piece pulls out here. Now you use your cushions, but obviously a lot of people like to swap those round. So again, if you use the back, it means you get more of an even usage and they're a bit flatter on the other side or some people will put on a mattress topper. That's entirely up to yourselves. But how it works, you pull this one out, then you must remember to turn these round. So again, it makes it a bit more even. Pushes in. Again, exactly the same with that one. And there you have your bed. So the last thing we really need to tell you about are your skylights and your windows. Now, first thing to tell you, very important, when you're traveling, you must make sure your windows and your skylights are closed. They are plastic. If they catch the wind, they'll be gone. Now, how you open them is you'll notice you've got these little buttons just here. Press and turn. And then you just push them open. Again, when you want them closed, just pull them to. Now you do have blinds and fly screens. Push those in, pull it up, it'll lock into place. Fly screen comes down from the top. You will notice that you can, just by pushing those back, clip it in. So if you want it halfway up, it's not a problem. Now, skylights work exactly the same. As you can see, I'm not quite tall enough to reach this one, but you do have your fly screen just there and your blind just there. I will reiterate one more time, it is very important to make sure your skylights and your windows are closed when you're traveling. Like I said, they are plastic. If they do catch the wind, they will be gone. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you found it informative.